grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. In the name of our blessed Savior, my dear friends, my next few words are going to be for those in the middle youth group and maybe even the senior youth group of which I'm a part. It has to do with economics. Did you know that the GDP, gross domestic product, came in at the end of the third quarter at 3.1%. Wow, it hasn't been that way for any number of years. And it took a number of economists by surprise Joan and I were in Chicago recently, and a USA Today was shoved under the door. And on Tuesday, September 26th, economists see slower growth rate for the US. Oh, they said it was going to be a 2.1 for the year, maybe 2.2 for next year. Wow, what a surprise. And then, when we got home, a week ago Saturday, September the 30th, it said, headline, Denver Post, stocks finish third quarter with record highs. Again, the economists were wrong. But we're now beginning the fourth quarter of the year which means that companies need to take this introspection. And as such, we'll be asking questions like, what have we done in the past? What are we doing now? What has happened in the past? What is happening now? What can we do to keep the GDP going upward? Well, let's see. The Apostle Paul did that kind of introspection in today's second lesson. In fact, he makes an outstanding statement in Philippians chapter 3. He said, but whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Loss? Is that being in the black? Or is that being in the red? <laughs> hmm. Now, Paul was not bragging about himself. He was talking about Jesus. Oh, we find ourselves many times setting ourselves up. Say, this is what I have accomplished. The, these are my religious achievements, but not Paul. He says instead, but whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. And I'd like to use that as our theme for this morning, a statement of profit and loss. Now let's take a look at the Apostle Paul for just a few moments. What was it that prompted him to say, whatever gain I had? Well, 
as you heard in today's second lesson, there was a whole listing of things that Paul could point to as his achievements, as his prophets. For one thing, he was the star pupil of Gamaliel, the most learned rabbi at the time in all of Israel. Now his sheepskin would be unprecedented. It was as if Paul graduated from rabbi school with the highest of honors, summa cum laude. And more than that, Paul could point to his background, his family. Why, he came from the upper crust, from the tribe of Benjamin. And even, even more than that, he was a Roman citizen by birth. Very few of his friends could say that. Saul was his Hebrew name. Paul was his Roman name. So looking back, he could say, look at all the gains I've had in my life. And I am sure that any number of individuals envied Paul for what was happening and had happened in his life. And I'm almost sure that there would be a mother or two that would point to a lagging son and say, look at Saul of Tarsus. He's making his mark in the world. Why don't you try to follow his example? And Paul says, but whatever gain." I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. How often don't you and I do that? We point to other people as the standard and say, whoa, I'm better than he is. I'm better than she is. On a scale of one to ten, how would you rate yourself? Well, an eight? Are you an eight? <laughs> a nine, maybe? Well, I, I'm as good as the next person, maybe even better than the next person. I mean, I'm good to my family. I, I take care of the kids. I, I pay my bills on time. I help my neighbor. I live a morally upright life. What, what more does God expect? What more does he expect? God created us for his glory. And that's a ten. One of the things that I found out after our trip to Chicago was all these emails that were coming back saying, now how would you rate the hotel you stayed in? Well, let's see, a one to 10 and they expected a 10. Uh, well, what about the airline? One to 10, uh, 10. <laughs> God expects a 10 from us as well. Well, let me see. Walk before me and be thou perfect. That's what God expects. Oh, do we fall short. And let me tell you this. God does not lower his standards in order to meet your expectations. No. He does not lower his standards. 
Now, what was it that helped Paul? He said, whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. What happened to him? Did he become a rabbi school dropout? Did he swallow the golden spoon? Did he need a blood transfusion? And they found out he didn't have blue blood after all. No. Something much more important. He came face to face with Jesus Christ. I think all of our Sunday school students and teenagers, you know the story, don't you? You probably memorized it for memory. Let me just share the opening words of Acts chapter 9 for you. But Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus so that If he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, but rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Saul rose from the crown, and although his eyes were opened, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus, and for three days... He was without sight and neither ate nor drank. You know the rest of the story, don't you? Listen to verse 8. Indeed, I count everything as loss for the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for his sake. I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. That's what happened. Everything else in his life after he had come to know Jesus as the Messiah was as garbage, rubbish in his life. Verse 9, Paul says, And be found, I may gain Christ, and be found in him, not having the righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. You know why that's important? It's not that you and I get right with God is that we are put right with God. And that all comes as a result of knowing Jesus as our Savior. Do you know him? Someone has said that the greatest distance in the world is the 10 inches from your head to your heart. It was the angel who said to Mary, his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. His name goes to the heart of the matter, and the heart of the matter is salvation. His salvation goes to the root of the problem, and the root of the problem is sin. God's answer 
The sin is Jesus the Christ. Jesus was born just as babies are born. <laughs> Laid there in that straw of a manger. He grew up as children grow up in a home, a loving home. Oh, we don't know anything about his childhood, really, except that at the age of 12, he confounded the doctors and teachers of the law with his knowledge as the Son of God. Then came his public ministry at the age of 30, and at the age of 33, he was arrested, suspended between earth and heaven as a common criminal. And there he died. On that Friday we call good, he died. Not for anything that he had done. No, he was perfect. He died because you and I don't measure up to a 10. He died for you and me. His death means that your sins are forgiven, and they took his body from that cross, wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. They laid it in that garden tomb, and on the third day, God raised that great son of his from the dead to give us the assurance that our sins are forgiven and that eternal life is ours by faith in Jesus. Paul says that. He said, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. That day is coming for you and for me and for all of our loved ones. I'm but a stranger here. Heaven is my home by faith in Jesus. Paul makes a tremendous statement of faith. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, he says this, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. In the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Faith in Jesus. I want to tell you a story about an older lady who had been attending a number of churches trying to find a church home. She settled on a church down the street from her house. Had been attending faithfully until she saw in the bulletin one Sunday an adult instruction class for membership. And one of her friends that she had made at the church said, why don't you go to that instruction class, learn more about Jesus, and then become a member of our church. I'll go with you, she said. And they did. As a result of studying God's word in that class, she came to know Jesus in a very personal way. The Sunday came for her to be received in the membership and... She was baptized. No, she had not been baptized before, but now she was baptized. And there was a difference in her life. The next day, she went to work. Big smile on her face. And one of her coworkers says, well, what happened to you? And she told them about what happened the, Sunday, the day before, where she was received into membership was baptized, and is now a Christian. 
And one of her co-workers looked at her and said, what is a Christian? <laughs> now that took her by surprise. She didn't have a ready answer, but then she looked. She looked over at a desk of one of her co-workers, and there was a jack-o'-lantern sitting on the desk. She thought for a moment and said, becoming a Christian is like this jack-o'-lantern. God reaches down into the pumpkin patch. He chooses us to become his own. Picks us up and he washes us clean from all the dirt and muck that comes from all the pumpkins laying in that dirt in the pumpkin patch and more. Then God reaches down and he cleans out all the muck that's on the inside. The seeds of doubt, of envy, of darkness, of temptations I find so difficult to overcome. He cleans it all out. And then, And then he places his light inside of me. And the lady said, I remember when I was baptized, the pastor said a special blessing over me that said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Oh, I almost forgot something. After God cleaned out all that muck and yucky stuff inside, he carved me and put a smile on my face. Paul says, whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. That was his confession. You know what my confession is? Whatever gain I had, I count it as loss for the sake of Christ. And I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, that will be your confession of faith this morning as well. Now, what more is there to say? But amen and amen.